Our lesson for today will be looking at chemistry 1502. The topic for today is bond formation, lesson 106, under unit 1, let us start. Bond formation is one of the important concepts that you should understand in organic chemistry, since you are dealing with different types of bonds, and you should know different types of bond formation in order to understand the bond breakage. So in this lesson video, we'll be looking at how bonds are formed and looking at different types of bonds. Now, before we dwell much on the different types of bonds, we should know that we have a term called electronegativity because this lesson video is mainly based on electronegativity. Now electronegativity is the tendency of an atom to attract a pair of bonding electron to itself in a molecule. So we do have um, elements with different types of electronegativity. So the most important elements which you should take note of the electronegativity value is Hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, magnesium, boron, chlorine, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. These are the most used elements in molecules or let me say compounds. So these are the electronegativity of these common elements that you should know. And fluorine is the most electronegative element amongst these elements. So you should just write this down. They are extracted from your prescribed test book. So we are very much safe to use these videos. So simply write them down and then I'll show you how to use these um, as we continue or as we proceed with this lesson video. Now in this lesson video, we'll be looking at different types of bonding. The first one will be ionic bonding. The properties of ionic bonding, you should know that in most cases, it's a metal bonding with a non-metal. These are one of the properties of ionic bonding. And you should know that the EN difference is greater than 1.7. And then the next bonding that we'll be looking at is covalent. Covalent bonding. And then under covalent bonding, you should know that we have two different types of bonding. We have polar covalent bonding and non-polar covalent. We'll explain this shortly. Then you should know that when you talk about a polar covalent bonding, it's when the EN difference is between 0 0.4 and 1.7. And then the EN difference for the non-polar covalent bond is 0 0.4. So these are the nodes that you should just write them down for now. And then we explain this in detail as we look at each and every bonding and explain them in detail using examples. Like I said in the introduction, ionic bonding is when we talk about a metal and a non-metal. Now let us explain this in detail. Let's say for example we have lithium bonding with chlorine, lithium chloride. Now let us look at the properties of this and how it came about being this molecule. So we can see that this is a metal and then this is a non-metal. So in this case, we can indicate, looking at these indications, we can conclude that this is an ionic bonding. Now let us explain this in detail. Now we know that lithium is in group number one. It has one valence electron. And then chlorine is in group number seven. It has 
seven valence electrons. Now we said electronegativity is the tendency of an atom to attract electrons to itself. So in this case, you should know that in ionic bonding, it involves the charges. We, we know that we have positive charges and negative charges. Now there is a lesson video whereby we look at how ions are formed. So in this case, if chlorine gains an extra electron, you should know that it becomes negative charged. And then if lithium loses electrons, it becomes positive charged. Now this is covered in the basics of how ions are formed. You should know that generally when an atom gains electrons, it becomes more negative because you know that electrons are those negative charges. And then when it loses electrons from its original state, you should know that it becomes positive charged. And as it loses more electrons, it becomes more positive. So in this case, lithium will actually transfer its electron to chlorine. Ionic bonding is based on the transferring of electrons. So if it transfer this electron, we basically say it loses its electron, then it becomes positive charged. And then if chlorine gains that extra electron, it becomes negatively charged. Like I said, when an atom gains electrons, it becomes more negative. When it loses electron, it becomes more positive. So in this case, you can see that lithium transferred its electron to chlorine and then it becomes positive charge and in most cases you should know that a metal will be the one transferring electrons to a non-metal so in this case we know that the laws of physics electrostatics there is some type of a nature of a force between the two since they are two unlike charges we know that will have a force of attraction then in this case Lithium will be attracted to chlorine, forming our molecule here. And then represented using a Lewis dot diagram, we are going to have something like this. And then this would be our ionic um, bonding. And another indication that we can use, we can use the EN difference. Remember I said the EN difference of ionic compounds should be more than 1.7. So in this case, if we can check the EN difference of the two, we know that the difference is when we take the electronegativity value of one element and then subtracting it with the other element. In this case, we said chlorine has EN difference, I mean has electronegativity value of 3.2 minus the electronegativity value of lithium which is 1.0 so in this case you can see that we're going to have 2.2 as our en difference you can see that this is actually greater than 1.7 so this confirms that we have a ionic bonding we have many examples of ionic bonding that you can verify. We have lithium fluoride, you can verify it. We have lithium bromide. We have lithium iodide. We have our common example sodium chloride. We have sodium iodide. You can check these examples. We have potassium bromide. We have potassium iodide, we have cesium fluoride, we have many more sodium iodide that you can check using the EN difference whether they are ionic bonding or not. Now let us continue going to the next type of bonding which is covalent polar, I mean polar covalent bonding. Most of the time this type of bonding involves, it involves 
non-metals. And you should know that when you talk about covalent bonding, we are talking about a sharing of electrons. Remember that in ionic we said it is a transference of electrons. So in covalent, whether it's polar or non-polar, you should know that electrons are shared. And we said that the EN difference of polar covalent is between 0 0.4 and 1.7. And when you talk about a polar versus non-polar covalent, like I said, covalent is based on sharing of electrons. When you talk about polar covalent bond, it's when you talk about uh, the type of bond whereby electrons are not shared equally. So we have two different types of covalent bond. When you talk about nonpolar, it's when we talk about when electrons are shared equally amongst the elect I mean amongst the elements within that molecule. Another thing that you should take note of this type of bonding is that it's between two different types of the most used example is H2O. Describing this using a Lewis dot diagram, we know that we are going to have oxygen as our central atom and then it will be bonded with hydrogen on each side and then we are going to have our lone pairs here. Now using this or drawing this in more detailed way, we have something like this where hydrogen brings its electrons. In this case, they don't usually or they don't normally transfer, but they will come closer and share the two electrons to form a single bond like this. Same goes to this one. It will do the very same thing. They share electrons to form this. So in this case, you should know that oxygen is more electronegative. So it will attract these electrons to itself such that we have something more or less like this then we said when an atom actually gains electrons it becomes more negative and then when it loses electrons it becomes more positive so since um, oxygen it attracts these electrons to itself we say it becomes partially negative then this is the symbol that we use and then this hydrogen is kind of and then this hydrogen it seems like it loses electrons it becomes partially positive so since we have two different types of charges a molecule with two different types of charges each side has positive charges and then on the central atom you actually have a negative charge or we can say one side is partially positive the other side is partially negative then we say it is polar and element with more electronegative will most likely to be partially negative and then the element that with um, less electronegative will become partially positive so a molecule that has two different types of charges within itself, we say it is polar. And then we can prove using the EN difference. But that task, I'll leave it to you to actually prove. Another example would be hydrochloric acid, where we have hydrogen with its electron and we have chlorine with its electron since chlorine is more electronegative compared to hydrogen it will pull these electrons to itself then it will become partially negative then hydrogen will become partially positive so going to our next but before we do that I, let me give you examples of other polar covalent bond molecules but let me leave that for the practice questions. Now let us go to nonpolar 
covalent bonding where the EN difference is less than 0 0.4 and you should know that the properties of a non-polar covalent bonding it's when we have identical atoms so if you have the same atoms you should know that their EN difference will basically be zero let's say we have hydrogen hydrogen bond by the way they share these electrons equally so should know that if the EN difference of hydrogen is 2.1 I mean the electronegative value is 2.1 for the first one minus 2.1 will actually give you 0 and of which it is less than 0 0.4 so that is one of the indication to show you that this is a non-polar covalent bond I said that each and every element that is bonding to an identical element should know that it is basically a non-polar covalent bonding and you should also know that any of the Nobel gases which are atoms they are non-polar and you should also know that any of the homonuclear diatomic elements are non-polar like for example H2 we have N2 O7 I mean O2 Cl2 N2 these are basically non-polar covalent and other example would be CO2 would be benzene would be methane so basically any molecule that has carbon and hydrogen should know that they are non-polar covalent and all the hydrocarbon liquids such as gasoline and toluene and you should also know that uh, most of the organic molecules are also non-polar remember that you can check this using the EN difference so for the following molecules simply show the type of bonding that exists between these two elements simply write whether it is non-polar polar covalent or ionic that's it for this lesson video this is Babula SJ thank you very much